just out of Anandpur. They are doing uh, pretty exciting, uh, exciting work in the emerging field of uh, aquaponics and experimenting with different models. Uh, I invite uh, Tejas now to give us more details of uh, the work he is doing in the regards of aquaponics and uh, can share his model as well. Tejas, over to you. Tejas, please unmute your mic. Yeah, am I audible now? Yes, yeah. Wonderful. Thank you, Nitin, for the introduction. Hello, everyone. Good morning. Uh, my name is Tejas. Uh, I'm the founder of RM Aquaponics. Today, I wanted to give you a quick introduction on what is aquaponics in general without going into too many details and share our journey so far. So these are the contents of my uh, today's presentation. I'll be going through a quick introduction about myself. And we'll spend some time talking about aquaponics and what its basics are. We're going to also see uh, some good, noticeable advantages of aquaponics. We'll talk about our own journey and then take some questions. So myself, I'm Tejas Rajvihar. Uh, I was born and brought up in Andhra Pradesh. Uh, I studied around uh, very, uh, I was working for five to six years before starting this. As an electronics engineer, uh, was working in Chennai as well as in USA for PayPal Research Labs. I did my BTEC in electronics from IIT Guwahati. Yeah, uh, let's focus on the topic today. Uh, what is aquaponics? So aquaponics, as itself, is not something uh, is not a new science, but I would like to call aquaponics as a new application of science, which is technology. Today's uh, understanding of how plants behave, how the water behaves, how the environment behaves has given us a chance to carefully manage it, the, our water, our livestock, and our plants, to design this beautiful concept called aquaponics, which is a very uh, closed, almost closed recirculating system, in which uh, aquaponics is a technology that involves growing fish and plants in a recirculating system. So the, we feed the fish, the fish talk make its own waste, the fish manure. The fish has enough nutrients and macro nutrients with macro and micro that are enough for a plant to survive and also thrive. So a basic aquaponics system would look like something like this, where we have a fish tank, we have some air stones to keep the dissolved, dissolved oxygen levels well in balance in the fish tank we have a pump that circulates the water from the fish plants and back so that the nutrient production and the nutrient consumption is put in check and we have a reliable electric tank so the of growth or these two that are right now on the screen one is called a raft bed. It's also, it also goes by the name of deep water culture. It's an excellent way to grow leafy green vegetables. Leafy green vegetables don't need, are, are usually are of a shorter lifespan and they can be, uh, with the advantage of raft beds, they can be planted, uh, they can be started as a seedling in one place. They can be put together, closely together uh, in their early stages and moved across over wider spaces to let them grow out and this gives a very good of a very good atmosphere for the plants uh, plant roots to get ample amount of water aeration and nutrients that they can grow in a very uh, stress free environment and focus on growth the one that you see to your right is called a media bed the media bed is usually kind of a uh, you could say it's like a elongated buckets or any other shape that you can imagine most of the media here is not soil uh, to expand it clay pebbles to vermiculite many other most of this plays the role of uh, 
support for the root structure to grow. The other wing is to host a wide variety of fish, moist and dark places, which all the fish waste that's produced uh, needs to be converted into plant usable nutrient. And these are the beneficial bacteria, beneficial bacteria that does all the job. And all these rocks uh, act as a home for all these beneficial bacteria. So these are the very common types of plant growing mechanisms that we will see in an aquaponic system. Going next. Sorry. Yeah. So what are the advantages of aquaponics? Uh, if we start to look at that, aqua, generally the aquaponic the vegetables that are grown in aquaponics have higher nutrient content. That is because they do not need to fight uh, amongst themselves for access to nutrients. Uh, nutrients that plants need are available in bulk thanks to the fish uh, waste. And so plants never feel that there is lack of nutrients, the lack of goodness in their system. This is a huge advantage compared to soil agriculture because tending to the soil and keeping the soil fertile is one of the biggest challenge in today's agriculture. And it's rapidly depleting. And aquaponics provides a beautiful way where the manure is being automatically created, automatically converted into compost, automatically being uh, taken up by the plants without huge manual intervention. And this allows for a very nice atmosphere for the plants to grow and also for the fish uh, so that they don't need to be prolongedly uh, living in a water that is not suitable for them. Plants help keep the water really clean for them. Since the fish are involved, aquaponics is organic by design. Uh, if there is a lot of uh there's a lot of questionable fraud going on in the current organic markets but this leaves no scope aquaponics leaves no scope for any kind of uh, very harmful pesticides or insecticides since there are fish any amount of chemical and harmful pesticides that we generally use to kill off all the bugs will directly affect the fish health so this is organic by design, which helps and encourages uh, entrepreneurs and progressive farmers to either find new methodologies or go back to traditional uh, traditional know-hows in fighting pests. There are many traditional insecticides and pesticides which are very, very effective and we don't need to uh, make a switch to go to really harmful industrial pesticides. I think there's a lag uh, I mean from my screen to the screen so I'm just yeah so uh, one of the biggest advantage of aquaponics is the amount of water it consumes um, the same water uh, that the fish is living in is circulated to the plants and it cleans the water and then the fresh water comes back to the fish so this circle repeats and repeats and repeats in itself with time the water that is that the, the water that we have begun with with time it the nutrient density and the water quality keeps on increasing and keeps on increasing the only water loss is the is that that the plants use to grow and minimal env uh, evaporation and perspiration losses so while water is becoming more and more scarce and the whole life on this planet was uh, only possible thanks to the liquid water that we have on the planet. We need to use this resource much more efficiently and aquaponics provides an answer to that. Along with producing good and healthy leafy greens as well as uh, vegetables, aquaponics provides a very good and efficient source for protein. And farmed fish by far is the most efficient protein that is available on the planet. Uh, because of the food conversion ratio. Every kg of feed that we feed the fish, we can expect more than 750 to 800 grams of 
mass that's converted into protein, fish mass that converts into. So this gives very good option, very good sustainable and low environmental damaging option for us to fulfill our protein needs. Aquaponics, since it's not dependent on soil, is vertically, uh, it, vertically scalable comes with its own challenges, uh, but there is an already an option. If there is a lack of space, going vertically uh, helps benefit, helps us take the benefit of it, especially in the urban areas, in households, in indoors, or going uh, going into undergrounds or terraces, doing this using grow lines. Aquaponics use a very high heel for square feet than any other farming technology on the planet uh, because of its nutrient dense atmospheres and the plants don't need to compete with each other or with other organisms and other weeds uh, that are that they coexist with. So there is a consistent higher yield per square feet uh, with the technology of aquaponics. Aquaponics uh, utilizes no soil, but there, there are also some some accompanying methods that can be also used, uh, which involves other potting medium, other growing medium that is very ideal to grow root vegetables uh, in aquaponics. And since there is no soil, there is very little to zero weeds. That's a huge advantage uh, in day-to-day -day operations. Not so spoken advantages of aquaponics are the kind of the organisms that uh, find aquaponics as a very good uh, place to grow. For example, plankton. Aquaponics is very, very good uh, habitat for zooplankton and uh, phytoplankton to grow, which again in turn becomes food for fish. So instead of the, slowly there develops a lot of other uh, other sources for fish to eat and the, then the commercial is due. And earthworms, it's so hard to <coughs> find earthworms, uh, even if we release earthworms, farm for them to at least live and if not multiply but the grow beds in aquaponics give a very good uh, act as a very good home for earthworms not only they uh, eat up all the all the fish waste that somehow escapes the filters and comes but they they clean up and in turn uh, in turn produce the very widely known black gold, their humus, which is in the fertilizer for plants in addition to what the fish produces. So with time, slowly the number of organisms, the number of organisms keeps on increasing. And as the system matures, it's very good to see the magic of the nature unfold between our eyes. Yeah, so I wanted to quickly show some of the pictures of wildlife farm. So, a 600 square feet rooftop pilot in Anantapur district in Andhra Pradesh. Uh, this was from one particular house, the tomatoes. Uh, we grow a lot of vegetables, and this pilot farm is dedicated for research. We try to grow all and any of plants. And these are the some of the fish that we have caught uh, just to take a few pictures. The fish right here, we have uh, the three major Indian carps and as carps right here. So relatively they grow slow and the most in aquaponics, which is tilapia. But they are very due to our our region, so we wanted to try with them first. And this is where you can see some of the really good uh, 
your left is what we what I showed initially in the first few slides, which is media bed. We can grow amazing leafy greens. Start leafy greens. We grow up. We use ourselves to very good exotic varieties, which find that a uh, very good ideal place for them to grow. Along the border, in that screen is where we have put up media beds, where we have gravel, construction gravel, any kind of is unless it alters the pH of the water is good for the media bed. So we have you can see some tomato plants and plants, which is a few months old and it's a little bit different. Also, you also see uh, the same raft beds uh, with good spinach growing there. Spinach that we use every day uh, right before we go and do our morning. This is uh, again to the to the left of your screen. The plant that's growing here is called Gongura. Uh, it's a very uh, popular leaf in the south. And in front of Gongura, the tank that you see is uh, the use for a pilot setup. It's a thousand liter tank where we host all fish, close to a hundred fish, and all that water repeatedly to the plants and then back to the fish to the behind this tank is where we have the filters and a small sump, and the motor pumps the water to the distribution tank, and the from the distribution tank it goes all the way. Now the fish uh, we have we keep doing. Uh, catch it, see how active it is, and then release back unless we have to use it for a harvest. So now I got a variety of leafy greens we use. It's called pok choy. Uh, it's high, widely used in Asian countries, other Asian countries, Asian countries. It's a very good uh, alternative. Uh, uh, much later, after we our time in Jaipur, Niam, we came back and we have been thinking about how we can uh, modularly scale our operations. And that's when we find a slight bigger farm. Uh, we have built a 2,500 on its farm, trying to keep our expenses to a minimum, but compromising on the principles of aquaponics. So this is the farm that we built. Uh, in the foreground is our groundnut crop that we sow in our land. So this is the uh, greenhouse. And inside the shade net, uh, along the view, is where we have media beds. And all these structures are, are now raft beds that we saw the leafy vegetables growing. And to the right again, we have media beds, and this is the distribution. These uh, slabs is where we have our sum. This is the fish tank. Uh, this is the view on the opposite side. This is the 10,000 liter fish tank. These tanks are really nowadays used for bioflock production, and this tank suits our purpose really well. So we had picked this tank. And all these are the filters that we use try and reduce the fish waste that eventually ends up in the media tanks uh, so that we have a concentrated sludge uh, which we can do mineralization and extract many many more nutrients that the plant needs so uh, we are now in talks uh, to set up aquaponic home systems uh, for homeowners as well as educational institutions uh, till date we have had more than a thousand farmers that visited our farms and get to learn about new farming methodologies, try to expand their thinking and see what changes they have to make uh, in the days to come and all the challenges, whether it be climate related risks or the human related problems that we have starting from labor to uh, migration of farmer families to urban areas. So what are the changes that we have? We are actively also conducting research on various fish species in aquaponics, trying to find out which ones do better, which ones uh, are more adaptable to tank culture, 
and their feeding cycles and so uh, doing some pearl culture in aquaponics usually pearls are nowadays there is very good commercial pearl farming uh, mostly in the asian countries uh, other than india uh, the china vietnam are very good at pearl. Uh, even our, we have a lot of native pearl mussels that are native to our rivers and ponds uh, so we are we are trying to do designer pearls in aquaponics and aquaponics pearls have become a very good big pot for them because the water is clean it almost resembles like a river uh, ecosystem so they do pretty good we are also doing some research on black soldier fly larvae as a very good sustainable source of protein for chicken fish and chicken feed uh, they are a very good replacement for the fish meal that is currently widely used in the production of fish food and also in the production of a lot of uh, uh important food for chicken fish meal that we currently use to produce these commercial pellets is drawn out by unsustainable fishing all over the marine not just that it's only unsustainable but their numbers are dwindling very fast so black soldier fly larvae uh, its life cycle is really uh, useful and beneficial not just to uh, produce the um, fish feed and chicken feed but also to tackle our solid bio waste that we create uh, especially in tier 2 tier 1 cities there's a lot of solid waste that we create that uh, goes into a big problem of uh, dumping grounds yeah so uh, overall we are trying to constantly evolve to bring back food purity by bringing production closer to consumption we want to uh, we are not very keen on producing exotic varieties that we want to export, but we want to bring back uh, everything and bring back everything closer to consumption. We want to decentralizedly grow these aquaponic systems in different parts of the country. <laughs> and we are trying to lay foundations for the same. We recently created a uh, promotional video to reach out to people. Uh, I'm interested in households and everything. And then I'll take your questions. Uh, thank you everyone. Uh, wanted to give a quick introduction to aquaponics and let you know our journey and what we are trying to do forward. Uh, now I'm open to taking if you have any questions. Thank you. Uh, participants may ask their questions now, if any.
participants may unmute their mic uh, before asking a question or they may write uh, the questions in the chat box uh hey just uh, there are a couple of questions uh, yes. one uh, i would like to understand how does the commercial works for this model what is the roi typically if you can explain that yeah so there are a lot of implementations that uh, for aquaponics uh, just a second i want to stop sharing my screen so that, yeah so there are a lot of different implementations Sorry, someone has said there's a lag in the video and audio. I'm sorry, I'll I'll share the link with you all. Uh, I'll share it in this chat window so that you can watch it anytime. Here it is. Yeah, uh, with, coming to the commercial aspect. So there is a lot of different types of implementations uh, to when it comes to the commercial aspect. We are trying to develop a very low cost commercial aspect that will do a return on investment in in two years or maximum two and a half years it all depends on what we choose to grow whether we are trying to grow with the exotic varieties or we are trying to grow uh, much more nutrient dense uh, vegetables if for example we have put a lot of uh, money and energy into setting up an aquaponics farm there is different strategies to go with it the best return on investment strategy is to go with all leafy greens uh, leafy greens basically are marketable the whole plant is marketable uh, we can, discarding all the roots we can sell the whole plant uh, in in that sense if we try and grow uh, much more nutrient dense vegetables like tomatoes uh, guards cherries strawberries it's only the fruit that uh, is a marketable so uh, the amount of food that we try we grow and sell so all the the choice of return on investment goes with the kind of product that we want to grow the kind of fish we want to grow and the market that we are trying so uh, in our at least with our uh, with our model excluding the cost of the land uh, the return on investment is two to two and a half years after which there's only uh, enough profit to be made for generations to come with very minimal maintenance okay and uh, the government uh, subsidy provide so uh, so far uh, i mean there has been there has been interest in many government organizations on aquaponics starting from national fisheries development board in bangalore sorry in hyderabad but uh, the subsidies uh, in this going to a scheme or a policy is taking time which is understandable uh, because there's a lot of evaluation cycles that are present in our system uh, but there is encouraging sign uh, hopefully we will see it in a few more years uh, but there are many local governments to uh, fisheries departments that are actively looking at aquaponics as a very reliable source for whether it's a household or a common farmer to grow consistently and grow a very wholesome food Fair. And in, in terms of maintenance, uh, how hard it is to maintain, how frequently you need to change the water and, and do you need to hire someone to maintain this on a daily basis or uh, how does it work for a common man? So uh, maintenance is different for different farms. For example, it is, if it is a household farm, uh, whether if somebody is interested in gardening and they want to set it up in their backyard or a terrace, uh, it's just about uh, spending five to 15 minutes in the morning looking at your looking at your uh, fish feeding them picking all your harvest and going out when it comes to a commercial farm we have uh, much more that is being produced so there's a little bit more maintenance that comes in but there is no comparison between maintenance and operating operational things when compared to a soil farming because the biggest chore the watering is automatic the manuring is automatic and and the plants are growing at their own pace and uh, even faster in this uh, in this system so the daily chores of weeding 
watering or zero practically zero everything is being automated in this so nowadays physical labor which is becoming a very big problem uh, in rural areas so that there's no better solution to uh, reduce the amount of physical activity that is there in traditional farming than aquaponics so as far as maintenance is concerned the primary jobs of the person who is taking care of a commercial aquaponics farm is to check uh, check whether the feeding of the fish is happening in a uh, calculated manner which is two to three times a day depending on their uh, size of the fish their biomass and seeing if there is any uh, pest that's going on and taking necessary action uh, for them and harvesting or planting so these are the biggest tasks that's happening and once in a week or once uh, twice a week checking the water uh, water parameters water quality parameters so these are the most uh, talked about and done maintenance works in aquaponics farm other than harvesting and taking the produce to the market which is common for every place okay um and uh, since you mentioned that about it can it can grow leafy vegetables well uh, can you can you please also tell us that uh, what all can be grown uh, through this and does the climate or geography also has an impact when you're growing something through this model so uh, aquaponics aquaponics has very good answers to a lot of different problems that we have in agriculture for example if we take climatic conditions for example where we do aquaponics uh, it's one of the driest and very hot places even when the temperature outside is <clears throat> uh, touching 45 degrees the water temperature water acts as a buffer uh, for heat so water heats up slowly because it's in circulation in convection so the water temperature of the fish or the plants doesn't exceed 35 degrees even when the temperature outside is 45 degrees so that helps hugely uh, take care of the plants when it comes to extreme climates and that also helps to maintain a very good root temperature for the plants be it exotic leafy vegetables or uh, tomatoes plants so it it uses a very powerful tool to manage the root temperature of the leafy greens and plants which helps us not only uh, increase the robustness of the plant but also grow many other varieties that are not uh, local to our place so it gives a very good scope to keep the plant in its in its comfortable temperature temperature ranges water plays a very good role in managing the temperature whether it is the overall uh, root temperature or providing the nutrients and keeping the keeping the media at a optimal temperature okay uh, uh, you mentioned that uh, the produce is organic by design um, but uh, are there any certifications being done for this so uh, usually at least in india uh, the organic certification is done for soil there is no certification that's done for water so as part of uh, there's a lot of debate going on even in the fisheries departments and uh, elsewhere within the country where uh, there's a proposals that are being kept for different kind of certification measures for Uh, when it comes to soilless growing mechanisms as of now there is not there is none uh, in india but usda U- united states has a very good certification uh, procedure which does give organic certifications for uh, for farms anybody with who is in indian farm can also apply for a usda certification because they could opt for exporting their product someone posted a question can you please help us knowing the farms in maharashtra or nearby pune where one can physically visit and visit the plant so there is there are a few commercial farms within india there is a very good one in bangalore uh, there is also one in uh, the closest one that that the person is asking here is in kolhapur uh, it's run under the under the brand name of truganic so maybe Uh, that's a closest one for the for sir to visit but 
it's run and operated by a completely different set of people. So you might have to contact them and get a form visit permission. There's one in Kolhapur. Okay. There's also one in Nainital uh, up uh, in the north. That's also being run. Uh, any more questions from the participants side? He's asking uh, Polapur's uh, firm's name, you know. Yeah, I've replied to him. Okay, fair. Any and farms in Rajasthan? Uh, so far, we haven't come across anyone doing in Rajasthan. Uh, with close association to Miam, maybe uh, one day soon, we will have a, at least a demonstrative farm in Jaipur. Sure, uh, we'll look forward to that. Uh, yeah. Any more questions, participants? Uh, okay, there seems to be none. So thanks, Tejas. Thanks for sharing your experience and insights related to aquaponics. It is an emerging field, and I'm sure the experience uh, you said uh, would be beneficial for all the participants. I thank all the participants for joining us today. Thank you. Have a good day. Great. Thank you very much. Thank you.